Yeah. You ready for the beach? I'm ready. Eleanor, are you ready for the beach? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go! Today we are taking a look at the brand new GoPro Hero 11 Black. What is new, what is different, and ultimately, should you upgrade to this camera? Also, does it overheat? We're gonna answer all that today for you guys. Today's video, by the way, not sponsored by GoPro. It is, however, sponsored by what is my very favorite GoPro accessory of all time? Snap mounts. If you own a GoPro, you should own snap mounts because, uh, Magnets. We'll talk about them a little bit later in the video, but first let's dive into the GoPro Hero 11 Black. There is a ton to go over today. Starting with starting with the physical features of this camera and what is new, um, nothing. Physically, this is the exact same camera as the Hero 10, which, which isn't new and exciting, and I think that some people are gonna talk about that, but I'm very excited about that. Because the GoPro already had a great form factor. Of course, waterproof down to 33 feet, that large 2.27 inch rear screen, large front screen, really good tactile buttons. I, I love these buttons. GoPro has really, really oddly good buttons. We still got those flip down feet on the bottom that are just super clever. They fold away when not in use and then they pop out when you need them and boom, you're mounting super quick. I absolutely love that the lens is user replaceable. I can buy a bunch of these little bad boys and when I scratch them, I just pop it off pop a new one on and I'm ready to rock again. And because they kept everything physically the same from the Hero 10 to the Hero 11, which by the way, the Hero 10 is physically the same as the Hero 9, all of our old mounts from the 9 and the 10 will still work on the 11. So your media mods, your max lens mods, anything that you had for the Hero 9 or 10, any mounts that you have, um, will work perfectly on the Hero 11. Which yes, of course means that if you have snap mounts for the Hero 9 or 10, they, they work for the 11 also. And also yes, the battery is still the same. So same size battery, but, but what is different is that the Enduro battery now comes with the Hero 11. For the Hero 10 and Hero 9, the, the standard battery, the blue battery, came with both of those cameras, and then you could upgrade to the Enduro battery. Now the Enduro battery gives you 38% longer recording. It does better in hot temperatures. It does much better in cold temperatures. And I'm pretty sure that the Enduro battery is now just GoPro's battery, because if you go on their website, I think you can only only buy the Enduro battery. I don't think I don't think you can even buy the standard battery anymore. So physically the same as the Hero 10. So what is new with the GoPro Hero 11 and and it's what matters the most. What's on the inside? <laughs> The GoPro Hero 11 now has a new larger sensor in there, which is one over 1.9 inches, which is a little bit, I mean, tiny bit larger than a one half inch sensor. But on action camera, that that is huge because this thing now also has an aspect ratio of eight by seven. So the sensor is almost a perfect square, which means that if you have a, a sensor that's square, but, but you wanna put out a four by three photo, well then boom, you just crop in that sensor to a four by three photo, or you wanna take that eight by seven and you want to crop in a 16 by nine, you can do that. Or a nine by 16, you can do that. So it's almost a perfect square giving you the freedom to crop your frame kind of wherever you want. So no more deciding while you're filming, should I should I shoot this way for YouTube and, and because it's better, or should I shoot this way for TikTok and Instagram Reels and all that stuff? You don't have to do that anymore because with an eight by seven sensor, you can crop that later in post. However you wanna slice that sensor, with that eight by seven sensor, you now have that option. When you are filming in eight by seven mode though within the camera, it does limit your resolution and your frame rate options, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes here. Because the next feature I wanna tell you about is is what might be the craziest feature that, that we're gonna talk about today. And it's it's most exciting for, for camera nerds like me, but I think, I think you're gonna like it also. Combined with the GP2 chip from the Hero 10, the GoPro Hero 11 can now shoot 10-bit color, which, which is absurd for a camera this size to be shooting 10-bit color. Now let me explain the difference between 8-bit color and 10-bit color. The Hero 9 and Hero 10, both 8-bit cameras. And on an 8-bit camera, it can render up to 16.7 million colors, which does sound like a lot. That's a big box of crayons. But with 10-bit, the GoPro Hero 11 can now render up to 1 billion colors. We're going from 16.7 million colors to 1 billion colors. That, that is an absurd 
leap in the ability to render colors within an image. Where you're gonna see this most is things like the sky. A lot of times in 8-bit footage, you'll see where there's gradients of color where the sky is going from, from maybe where the sun is and it's really white and bright and then all the way kind of gradient out to where it's, it's darker blue out here. You're gonna kind of see some banding where there's kind of those lines in the sky. It almost looks like a rainbow of colors. That is 8-bit color. But on 10-bit color, you've got so many more colors that as it moves out, it's able to produce that gradient really, really smooth. It's it's the dorkiest, nerdiest new feature of the GoPro, but boy, is it good. All right, let's talk about resolutions and frame rate. When filming in 16 by nine mode, we're still getting that same awesome 5.3K footage at up to 60 frames a second. In 4K, we can go up to 120 frames a second. And at 2.7K, we can go up to 240 frames a second, which is eight times slow-mo. Eight times slow-mo is ridiculously slow. There are, there are very few times that I ever use 240 frames a second. Even 120 frames a second is usually too slow. I'm almost always at 60 frames a second. Then when we jump over to four by three aspect ratio, which is super popular for FPV drone pilots because they can use GoPros real steady to stabilize in post. So instead of stabilizing in the camera, they film in four by three with no stabilization, throw it over to GoPro's real steady stabilization and they get those like crazy stable shots. In that four by three aspect ratio though, we do drop down to 5.3K at 30 frames a second, 4K 60 frames a second and 2.7K at 120 frames a second. And then now we also have that new eight by seven aspect ratio, which I imagine that FPV pilots are gonna take advantage of. I don't know if you're able to pull that into real steady yet. A lot of these features aren't available pre-release, but I imagine that that would be amazing. And we'll talk about why in a minute here, but in that eight by seven aspect ratio, we can do 5.3K up to 30 frames a second and 4K up to 60 frames a second. There is no option right now to do 100 120 frames a second with that eight by seven really square aspect ratio. But there's a, a super clever new trick that they are using that eight by seven aspect ratio for, and it comes to us in the form of two new digital lenses. On the Hero 9 and 10, we had narrow, linear, wide, and super view lenses. With super view being, being the widest lens that was available in this camera, but now with that eight by seven sensor, they introduced a new digital lens called Hyperview. Their widest lens yet, and an equivalent 12 millimeters, which is, absurdly wide. And basically what they're doing is they're taking that eight by seven frame, the whole sensor, and they're squishing it down into a 16 by nine. So you're seeing this crazy wide view, but it's kind of squished into a 16 by nine frame for you. So you just get this super wide, super immersive look. And while it's great for when things are far away, when things are a little closer, they look okay if they're in the middle of the frame, but if they move kind of off to the side of the frame, they, they start to get real warpy. And there's quite a bit of distortion out there on the edges. It is really cool though, and for POV shots in particular, I think I think that's gonna be the lens to go to. I think it's gonna look so dang cool and your viewer is just gonna, you just kind of feel like you're there when you're looking through that lens. It's so wide, again, a little bulby, but, but really cool. I'm glad it's an option. I'll probably still film mostly in super view, but cool to know I have that option to go wider. The second new digital lens though, it it might be even cooler than Hyperview. Before I jump into the little, let me tell you guys a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Snap Mounts. Again, my, my very favorite GoPro accessory. If you have a GoPro, you should have Snap Mounts because most people like myself have multiple GoPro mounts. This is the suction cup mount that lives inside my windshield. That's how I do those cool like time warp things as I'm driving. This is a tripod mount that I use all the time. And then of course, I always walk around with the pole and snap mounts can move my GoPro from mount to mount um, that quickly. So when I jump out of the car, I just grab my GoPro, slap it on here, and now I'm walking around with my GoPro on a pole. I don't have to work with thumb screws. I don't have to deal with any of that. I wanna throw it on a tripod, boom. Uh, on a tripod because of snap mounts. Again, turning any mount that you currently have into a magnetic mount for your GoPro. Now you might say to yourself, uh, I am, I am a super gnarly guy and I do super gnarly stuff and there is no magnet in the entire world that could that could hang on to what I'm gonna put it through. And you might have a point, but you'd also be wrong because Snap Mounts has this guy. Check, check that out. Can you see the little, little extra bits right there? This is their locking adapter. So if you are gonna go do something that, that you, I mean, these magnets, they don't come off. But if you were gonna go do something that is super gnarly, you take your snap mount, you take this guy, you put it in like this, you twist it in place, and now you have a magnetic as well as two hooks mechanically advantaged holding that in place. Um, 
it's not falling off. If you guys wanna check out snap mounts as well, have these on all of your different mounts and be able to just move your GoPro back and forth, First thing in the description, they are um, amazing. Okay, back to the Hero 11 and that second digital lens that, again, I think might be even cooler than Hyperview. Remember on the Hero 10, we had something called Linear Plus Horizon Leveling, and you could take your GoPro and do this with it, and, and the Horizon, it wouldn't go anywhere. As I start tilting them, both of them do a really good job with Horizon Leveling, but watch the Hero 10, when we get to about 45 degrees, think it totally loses it and that goes away but keep an eye on that hero 11 and we go all the way upside down no problem on the hero 11 come all the way back so 360 degrees no matter no matter what you do with your gopro um the horizon stays upright <laughs> so it's as if the hero 11 always has a max lens mod on there and Again, you can just spin your camera. When I first tried this, I, I audibly giggled just by myself because I, I thought that was so cool. Oh, you can still put the Max Lens Mod on here and you get the same effect, but a much wider view. Next up is Hypersmooth 5.0 with Auto Boost. Now the stabilization on GoPros has, has always been crazy, but of course there's a crop factor. Again, we're taking an inner rectangle, we're putting it inside of an outer rectangle. So the more you wanna be able to move that inner rectangle, the more you have to crop in. So what Auto Boost does is it dynamically adjusts that crop based on how shaky the camera is. So instead of going into the settings and just saying standard stabilization, which is a bit of crop or boost, which is a lot of crop, you say, just go ahead and do that automatically for me, please GoPro. And as you walk along, it might be wide, but then as you start running and your camera starts shaking, that crop crops in a little tighter. Then you start walking again, it kind of widens back out and it dynamically adjusts how cropped in your frame is based on how much you're shaking the GoPro. That's very cool clever. And then the last big feature you're going to hear GoPro talk about with the Hero 11 is their auto upload and highlight video creation feature. Now I haven't been able to try this out because it wasn't available during pre-release. I believe it's going to be available very soon though. So we can all try it out together. But basically what happens is when you plug your GoPro in, it's connected to your app. It's right there. It's going to automatically upload your footage to the cloud for GoPro subscribers only, but it's now going to take that footage and it's going to auto highlight that footage, chop it up and create a highlight video that it's, that it's then gonna email to you like the next day or something. It's kind of like, you know, what they do on the iPhone where you get those those videos of your photos from the past. It's kind of like that for, for the GoPro. I probably won't use that feature very much, but it's one of those things where every once in a while they'll make one for you and you go, ah, that was a pretty good one. That was fun. I like that one. Did I mention that this takes 27 megapixel photos? The Hero 10 did 23 megapixel photos, but now the Hero 11 is doing 27 megapixel photos. And while, while I'm not a big fan of the megapixel race, because I think a lot of cameras can trick consumers by saying, oh, I do 48 megapixels, and it really looks like garbage. In this case though, with that new sensor and the GP2 processor, um, the photos look really good. I don't take a lot of photos on my GoPro usually, but the photos that I have taken so far are super impressive. What might be more impressive though, is that out of that eight by seven video footage, you can pull 24.7 megapixel screen grabs. Of course, when you're shooting photos, you can do raw, you can do super photo. There's a lot more things you can do when you are in photo mode, but cool to know that in video mode, there's some, some very high resolution screen grabs that you can just pull out of your photos. Pull photos, videos. Uh, what else is new? Time Warp 3.0 is here. Now we can do 5.3K on Time Warp. I love using Time Warp. That's, that's why I have this mounted in my car because you get those really cool driving Time Warps and they're, they're always really fun for videos. And then new modes are on here. So if you swipe down now, you swipe over to preferences, you'll see in the top there's video mode and in the bottom controls. In video mode, you've got two options. You have highest or you have extended battery. Now in highest, it's giving you full access to everything that the GoPro has to offer. And when you flip to extended battery, it limits the resolution and frame rate that you can shoot at and the options that are available so that you get the most extended battery. And then below that is controls. And this is an interesting one and at at first I thought it was silly, but now, now I actually kind of like it. So the first mode is pro. That is everything. Just like your GoPro has always been, you can kind of scroll down through those settings. There's, there's so many options and things you can tweak and dial in, and then you can switch to something called easy mode. And easy mode says preloaded with video photo time-lapse settings that make it easy to point, shoot, and get amazing results. Basically when you're in this mode and you go into video, 
you just says video, one time speed, low light. And on the left, I can switch my lenses up and down. On the right, I can switch my speed. So it's just kind of setting the camera up in a way that's that's really easy to understand. There's not a lot of complex things going on to confuse people. So you throw it to this easy mode and uh, you're, you're gonna get some great photos and video. Great for beginners. And then when you get a little more advanced, you wanna dial things in a little bit more, you flip over to that pro mode and you get all the controls that there is. So those are all the, the pros and the, the main features of this camera. What? What are the cons of the Hero 11 Black? And honestly, the cons for me on this camera are the same that I had for the Hero 10 Black. The first one being that there's no quick switch button on here. I want a physical button that is quick switch. Now, there is a clever little trick to do. Let's say I'm in the water, maybe I'm snorkeling. I have my screen locked because I don't want water to be doing funky things to my touch screen. So how then will I switch maybe through my quick settings? I'm in video mode, I wanna to get to a different quick setting. How do I do it? I do power and then shutter really quickly power shutter, pulls up this little front screen here. Now I can use the power button to cycle through all of my quick settings. And then when I find the one I want, I hit the shutter button and, and I've selected it. That is clever, but I just kind of wish there was a third button on there that I could go boop, 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 and whatever video, photo, or time-lapse mode I was in, I could then cycle through those quick settings within that mode. I, I really want a third button on here. I get that they kept the physical form factor the same for this, so that mounts, so that things like the media mod, stuff like this would all work with this new camera, and obviously there's no extra hole for a third button, but um, I really want it. And then my next con is is same as kind of it's always been. Uh, the audio is good, but not great. The wind reduction is, is usually my main pain point with all action cameras. Okay, came out here for a little audio test for the GoPro Hero 11. This is what the audio sounds like just straight out of the camera. No wind. It is, it is super, super calm right now. We're going to uh, go for a little skateboard ride, add a little bit of wind, and then you can you can hear what it sounds like as I start moving. I do have wind reduction turned on, so this is GoPro giving it everything it's got to reduce to reduce wind. Here we go. All right, 10 miles an hour. How does 10 miles an hour sound? 10 miles per hour of wind or, or you were doing something where you were going 10 miles per hour. What does that sound like uh, audio on the GoPro? Right now we are at 15 miles an hour. There's 15. How does that sound? 15 miles per hour on the GoPro Hero 11. How's that wind reduction hanging in there? And then let's uh, get all the way up to what this board can do. We're at 20 miles an hour. There's 20 miles an hour. How's the GoPro sound at 20 miles per hour? Audio test with the GoPro Hero 11. Whoa! When you're just walking around, it's it's usually totally fine. And then when you, you go fast or there's a lot of wind introduced, even with wind reduction on, the audio kind of falls apart. If you do want to see a really great way to get high quality audio for your GoPro videos, click click up there. I made a whole video on how to get great audio for, for your GoPro. And then the last con on the Hero 11 is the same as the Hero 10 and 9. It's that when you are connected to the app, you're controlling your GoPro from the app, and you hit record on the app or on your GoPro, the screen goes black on the app. So while you're not recording, you can preview what your shot's gonna look like, but as soon as you hit record, uh, that preview goes away and you don't know what your GoPro is recording if it's mounted somewhere else. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that's like a patent issue. I think there's a whole legal thing going on where GoPro used to be able to do that and then they kind of lost that feature because of some some legalese thing going on. I'm not totally positive. Uh, someone commented that a while back and, and that's what I kind of just took. Okay guys, that is it. That is the GoPro Hero 11. What is new, what is different, and what is the same? Was Was there something else you wanted to see about this camera? Oh, overheating. Does the GoPro Hero 11 overheat? That is a fantastic question. And for that, I made an entire video for you guys. Click, click on one of these floating boxes on the screen here. That is going to be an overheating video on the Hero 11 Black to find out if this has the same issues as, as the GoPro Hero 10. And then maybe while you're at it, click, click the other floating box for, for another interesting camera that was uh, conveniently released also today. Go watch those, these other videos. It's, it's, they're good.